All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking a peek here at our Unit 5, our Rational Expressions Review. We are going to be doing the odds today. We will take care of some evens at a later time. So without further ado, let's get on to this. So number one, working alone, Shane that can harvest a field in 14 hours. I noticed the work problem right away. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me, I'm going to go back to having all my fractions here. Because remember, this side over here is going to be the side where people are working alone. The side over here is going to be where people are working together. So we got to figure out where these fractions are going to go. So alone, Shana can harvest a field in 14 hours. Okay. Stephanie can harvest the same field in 16. Again, are two people working by themselves. We're going to be looking for the piece where they're working together. So, as we've done before, to get our LCD, even though it's not a true LCD, we've talked about that before as well. We're just oh, trying to learn how to type into the calculator. Okay, so this 224, along with the T that I have in my last term, is going to be my, we'll call it my common denominator. So it's not the least, but it'll do for our purposes. The ones that are there stay. And as we have done several times before in many places, including a little later in this video, we're trying to figure out a way to go from our old denominator to our new one. And so if we need to do a little side work, 14 times what gets me to 224t, I can figure this out. Let me get my calculator back on the screen here. Sixteen t. That's what I would need here. And you may notice as you do these first couple, and we'll make note of it after we give this one a go. Now, hopefully, you might look at this and go, "Wait a minute! I just did fourteen, and I got sixteen. So does that mean if I do sixteen, I'm going to get fourteen? Uh, yeah. Does that also mean then it's true when I'm doing these, if I have the alone ones, this one will be the one I'm multiplying here, and this one's the one I'm multiplying here. They basically just kind of switch. That's also true. So if you're looking for a shortcut, that's always a way. And this last one, I already got the T. I do the 224. Now I'm going to stress this a couple of times during the video. The only time at this point you can dump the denominator is when there's an equals, when there's an equation of some sort. So here I've got 16t plus 14t would be 30t equals 224. And divide by 30. And again, if you did 7.5, I'm not going to jump up and down and scroll nearest hundredth. Well, maybe I would jump up and down and scroll. Okay. So I look at that the same way. Now, normally, since I said this is the odd side, and I'm going to stick to that, I'm not going to bounce all around here. Normally I would do three, but here's what I notice. How long do it take they work together? How long do it take they work together? These are exactly the same. I'm not going to waste your time with that. And anyway, you need some practice. So I'm going to leave you alone on that one. Now, the one thing I will do for you on that problem, however, is I don't mind telling you what your answer should be, and that would be 4.63 hours. So if you're working in your home, at home on your own, that is what you should be getting for that problem. Okay, simplify the expression. You need an LCD, other factor and just cancel. But again, you need an LCD for plus and minus. We've chatted about the LCD several times. You have a help sheet that you can use. There are no more over on the shelf. So if yours has been misplaced, thrown in the garbage, made a paper airplane of, never grabbed one, whatever, they were there for like a week and a half, this is going to be what you're basically going to need to remember at this point. Okay? So before we start anything else, we're going to put parentheses where we see pluses and minuses so we don't forget them. When I go to build my LCD, I work my way down my checklist. Coefficient, got one right there. Single variables, no plus or minus. Nope, because again, we're only looking at the denominator, not the numerator. Parentheses, each different one. M plus I. 
So that is going to be my common denominator for each of my fractions. And just like we had before, we're going to write our numerators back in. They don't disappear. LCD, we've got that for now. What do I get to go from here to here? Now you could do our side to side like we did the sticky note in the last section. Or you could say, hey, I got this set of parentheses. The only thing I didn't check off is the four. But don't cancel the fours now because then you don't have a common denominator anymore. Okay? No canceling until the end when we're doing adding and subtracting. Okay? So add or subtract. No cancel till. Yeah. Okay. And then I do my comparison here as well. I've already got the 4. I need the n plus 5. Okay. Do I cross out the denominator at this point? No. There's no equals. Okay. Equations only. Otherwise, we keep common denominators. Please and thank you. Oh, you guys don't need to be worrying about that stuff right now. Move that out of the way. So I do my simplifying to get down to one fraction. I'm going to distribute my 4. Over here I'm going to distribute my 4m. So now I start looking I'm like, ooh, I got some different like terms to put together. I see a squared term. So let's do that first. 4m and 20m is 24m plus 4. Now, I got several things working here. First thing, now that I think I'm to the end, put those around so I don't do anything silly, before you circle it and say you're done, we're going to try to factor the top. I see a square. That's the reason I'm going to do that. So I notice they're all divisible by 4 a double arrow here. So we'll divide that 4 out. It doesn't disappear. It just comes to the front. Now I notice, hey, these 4s are out here. They're not bonded with anything. They can cancel. Can I cancel these M's? Oh, I better not have heard yes from somewhere right now or I'm in the midst of jumping over my desk and going after them. Um, no, I can't. Now, normally would I try to factor this? Yes, but I notice something. My multiply number is 1. What can you multiply to get 1? 1 and 1. Is that going to add up to 6? Nope. That one's done. Those are the types of things that we're looking at on these. Now, this next one gives its own special little issue. Okay, number 7. Looking at numerators again, not... Well, I'm not looking at the numerators. I'm just looking at the denominators. I mean, building the numerators here in a minute. Before you start doing your LCD work, can I factor this? Ooh, I can. Both divisible by 2. Okay, if you can factor the denominator, you need to do that before you start. So then, I go looking for my LCD. Let me get my reference back here. Coefficients, 2 and 3. So if I start counting by 2s and 3s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 6. Ooh, I heard 6 in both of those lists. 6. If I'm not sure, and I still have my factoring slash handy-dandy multiplication chart, I go to the 2 and 3 columns, and I start working down until I see the same number. Now these, there are still a few hanging around, so grab them quick before they're gone. Single variables? Nope. Parentheses? Yep. Okay, now my numerators come back into play. Do not start canceling stuff. Don't. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> no. Okay. Not till the end. Old to new. Now here it may pay to, to 
get a little side work going here. Three times something is six times three r minus four. Now I notice something right away. I don't see any parentheses here, so I know I'm going to need three r minus four. But what about to get from three to six? I need a two. So it's two three r minus four. And then I do the same thing over here. Now this time I might be able to get away with it. Because I look and I'm like, okay, I got the 3r minus 4. What do I have to times 2 by to get to 6? 3. So I get that situated. And I go, okay, now how am I going to do this? How do I clean all this up? Because I'm making one big fraction here. I'll tell you how you clean this up. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, let's, let's take care of that right away. Distribute my 4. And here, remember, this negative goes with my 5r. And we've even talked about putting the negative here and just turning this into plus. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15r. I go ahead, I combine my like terms. Watch for signs. Negative 3r minus 16 6, 3r minus 4, and here's why it's so critical to keep parentheses in when you see pluses or minuses. You're not going to think, oh, I can cancel those. No, you can't. They're bonded. Well, I can reduce the 6 and the 3. No, this isn't bonded, but that is. That's as far as you are going to go. So as we keep rolling through these here again, we have another add and subtract problem. We're going to need an LCD again. We're not looking at this, but ooh, oh, I see all sorts of fun things here for factoring. I see they both have an n, and I see that they're both going to be divisible by 3. Now, again, if that's an issue for you, bust out your multiplication chart or try dividing some numbers in your calculator. So I can get a 3 and an n out of there. So 3 times 3 is 9. I got 1n. I need 2. 3 times what gets me to 12? 4. And I already got the end. So I took care of that part. And again, we're strictly focusing on this. So what is my LCD going to be? And I hadn't even put my parentheses around there. It's just not good. So let me kind of get my brain working here again. And again, you're going to have to have your brain working on this too. Coefficients 2 and 3. And we just got done with the 2 and 3, so we're going to assume we know that's going to be 6. But again, otherwise, I could use my chart. I could make a little mini list, you know, kind of like this. Nope, not time to go. No, oh, probably help be a list you could see, right? 6 and 6. I do have a single variable here that needs to be included. And I've got a set of parentheses. So all of those would need to be included in my LCD. So when I go to build my two new fractions, parentheses around anything with a plus or minus. We've talked about that before. So now I get here, got that, got my n plus 1, and now I'm into builder mode. So I notice on the first one, got the 3 in got the n minus 4. Oh, hardy. Now see, this is a good example of what can happen if you get going too fast. What did I do? I just looked at this one. Still not time to go. And I forgot to look and see that that is 6. So shame on me, but hopefully a good reminder for you that we can make a boo-boo otherwise. So I got the n, 3 on minus 4. That's still the same. I've got the n. Okay. What do I multiply to get from 3 to 6? 2. And again, if you want to look at something side by side with this, where you can look and go, okay, let me get my stickies back out here. So I've got 3n, 3n minus 4 times something, and I need to get to 6n, 3n minus 4. I can even look and go, okay, I got that, I've got the n, how do I get from 3 to 6? Okay, it's a legit way of doing it. Now this time, this gets a little crazy. So I'm like, well, let's see. 
2 times what gets me to 6? 3. Don't need, oh, I do need the end. That didn't get checked off. Oh, I do need this. Oh, this could be this could be a crazy mess right here. You're like, is that right? Yeah. Anything that does not get checked off is, is going to be part of that. So let's get to one fraction here, and then we'll see how much cleanup we're going to be able to do. And typically on quizzes and things, I will do easier type questions, just some basics. So if this gets long and huge and crazy, don't expect there's going to be something quite this long and crazy on the quiz. Just saying. 1 times 2 is 8. Now what do I do with all of this? Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a minus and I'm going to put a set of parentheses. Because whatever I get when I get this finished up, I'm going to need to be able to clean up. So how do you deal with this? Me personally, if I have multiple sets of parentheses, I'm always going to do that first. So n minus 4n plus 1. And I'm going to multiply my edges together. Now, hopefully, this is not the first look that you have had at any of this, because if you if it is, who this 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 could get ugly, and I, I don't want it to get ugly for you. Now, hopefully, this is a multiple time you've been looking at it, and now you can look and go, okay. So I did the box on these two. I still got to multiply them by the three n though, and I'm going to distribute that. So three n times n squared would be three n cubed. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9n squared, 1 plus 1. And 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12. Oops, I got a little too quick there, didn't I? N. So I start to look, as this is getting a little bit squished here. And I start looking, I'm like, okay, i got to distribute that negative. So distribute the negative. And I take a look. Now again, this is all together because I don't even have any like terms. n cubed, n squared, n and 8. I don't even have any numbers that divide into all of those. So in this case, that's as good as I can do. Okay? Sometimes there will be some simple finest we've seen. Sometimes there won't. So as we kind of keep looking. Okay, now notice rules have changed. Now we're dividing. What does that mean? Well, it means a few things. First, it means we're going to flip our second fraction over. And I'm actually going to write it out this way so we don't forget. Some of you would actually write the arrows on our last quiz, and then you'd never do anything with it. So it's worth the extra little bit of work to get that set. So now I go through part by part. Looking to see if there's anything that factors. Do not multiply right away. Because a lot of times this is going to simplify down. Now the first fraction, not much there. Second fraction. These have a 4 in common. Okay, I'm going to pull that out. Denominator. Looks like a diamond. Multiplies to a negative, which tells me there's one of each sign. Adds to a positive. So let's see. Two numbers multiply to 30 that add up to 7. So let's see here. I can use my chart. I can 6 and 5. No. 3 and 10. Ooh, 3 and 10. They're 7 apart. Positive number's bigger. And look what happens. This is why we factor first in a situation like this. Because now look at all the stuff that I have that's alike. And I get all the way down to that for my answer. Okay. So be cautious. If it's division, that second fraction, the fraction after it, is going to get flipped. Same thing going here. Check out how easy this is going to become. And again, I'm not saying this is going to happen every time, but it's something you've got to watch for. Now here, could I start factoring stuff? Sure. But if I, if I take a look at it for a second, check it out. These are the same already. Why wouldn't I just zap them already? Now, if I factor them, I'm still going to cancel them. It's still going to be okay. But I don't know why it would. 
There's no need. You just get that canceled out. Nothing else cancels. I'm done. Okay, simplify each and state the excluded values. What makes the denominator equal zero? Okay, a couple things here at the start on this one. Oop, almost went to the wrong one. Okay, 21R stays the same. What do they have in common? They're both divisible by 49. They both have an R. Okay, don't look at this and go, woo, different squares. If it was just 49, yes, but it's not. Got the 49, got one R, need another. Got the 49, got the R, but I need to multiply by the negative 1. Without a squared, that is not a difference of squares. Do not factor that. So now that I've factored, what can I do? Stuff that's not in parentheses can reduce. So the R's cancel, okay. Oops, excuse me there. Ooh, that reduces 3 over 7. So 3 over 7, R minus 1. Okay. The stuff that is not bonded by plus or minus is fair game, fair game, fair game. Now, state the excluded values. What would make the denominator equal 0? You take anything there with a the variable. We're going to set it equal to 0. So if I had gotten 1, that would have been a problem. So that's what we're looking at. Okay. This, that's, you know, not much different from what we've been doing. Again, here, do not start canceling stuff. Bonded. Can I factor it if it's not identical already? Usually. Multiplies to a negative, one of each sign. Adds to a negative, means the negative number is bigger, they're two apart. Multiplies to 15, two apart. Five and three. I find me now a set of common parentheses. And I'm good. Gotta watch for things. And I'm going to throw a couple in that I'm trying to suck you in. 19, I'm trying to suck you in to cancel those 21 X's. Better not. They're bonded. Now, does that mean they're not factorable, maybe? Mm, I think they are. So your chart, your calculator, you start working with 21 and 6. And I'll even show you a way to even play with this and make it a little slicker. Now, check this out. I don't remember if I've shown you this before or not. If you take the two values that you're trying to see if they have anything in common and math enter, enter them, you can figure out, oh, 2 and 7. Now, 6 divided by what gets me 2? Oh, 3 does. The 3 is what's going to come out. And I can do it that way. Or I can use my chart, or I can just start dividing numbers into 21 and 6 and find some that work. Same here. 9 and 21. It's going to be 3 again. But when you get to here, don't get cancel crazy. Threes cancel. They're not bonded. Can I cancel the seven X's? Again, some of you, if you're multiple offenders, I'm going to start, start jumping over the desk here. Come find you. No, those are bonded. Unless they're identical, I can't do anything. Just keep into some detail work and we'll be okay. Okay, 21. No parentheses. I put them in. Anything in common? If I have one of our multiple ways of doing this, yes, 10 is in common. So I divide that into the 10 and divide that into the 70. Looks like a diamond. Multiplies to a positive. Adds to a positive. Multiplies to 14, adds to 9. 7 and 2. Identical parentheses can go away. But stuff that's in parentheses, can I cancel? Don't reduce that 22. I know I keep saying that every time, but some of you, I think, I, we might need to say it that many times. All right, we got the rest of our application problems here on the back.
couple more. All right, a sugar solution was made by mixing nine fluid ounces of a 60% sugar solution and six fluid ounces of a 20% sugar solution. What is the concentration of the mixture? Okay, we have chatted about charts being nice ways for us to do this. We're like, okay, what have we got? We got number of ounces. This first one, we got nine ounces of 60% sugar solution. Again, the labels aren't as important as that you label them to where you can understand where your numbers are going. And that your percentage is a decimal. And six fluid ounces of a 20% solution. What is the concentration of the mixture? What is the percentage of the mixture? And I also know with my mixture, 9 and 6 means I'm going to have 15 ounces at the end because I'm going to be blending these two other solutions together. So ounces times sugar percentage equals the mix that you're going to get. So I multiply these values together. I multiply these values together. And I multiply these values together. And that last column gets me my equation. Now I've had some of you ask me, well what if on the last column I added down instead? Would that still work? It would. It would just be this is going to be your equation instead. But that's a nice thing. It's hard to mess this up. So add those up. Divide by 15. Okay, and the x is the decimal, but I want the percentage. So put it back as percent. So a lot of these really aren't that bad, but you have to practice. So hopefully you have. If not, you still got some time maybe with the evens here. One more mixture problem, and then I'm going to get out of the way here. How many ounces? We don't know of mixed nuts that contain 66% peanuts. Must Jose add to five ounces of mixed nuts that contain 20% peanuts to make a mixture that is 56% peanuts. Now that's a little different. Last time we were looking for the percentage. This time we're trying to figure out what this is. Still setting up the same, still multiplying them horizontally. But what about here? Now we've talked before. Up in number 23, I mixed 9 and 6 and got 15. I added them. I can do the same thing here, even though one of the values is x. Just becomes x plus 5. Not x times 5, not 5x. x plus 5. And then I've got to distribute that. decimal in there. And my equation, once again, is in the last column. Now, this time I've got x's on both sides. So again, it doesn't matter, oops, I should have x's on both sides, there we go. It doesn't matter which side I take them to, I normally will subtract the smaller one though, so I don't get negatives. So all my x's are together, subtract the 1 out, that is an x, not an 8, and it finds out that we need to have 18 ounces of that. Okay, so we kind of busted through a lot of these. With some explanations, the test itself, again, 18 questions. There's even going to be an extra credit question. If you know your stuff, you're going to get through. You're going to do well. If you haven't practiced and practiced and practiced, this make it a little ugly. So practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already, 
on your reviews, on your homework, and let's get this done and do it well.